director here at San Diego Mesa College. And um, we are so honored to uh, have had this beautiful exhibition of Helen Redman's work. Um, the uh, exhibition has received a lot of wonderful attention with uh, an article on CDB that just came out and, uh, and also a lot of great uh, comments from people who've seen the show. And it was really a labor of love. We put a lot of heart into it. Uh, we've been working on it for two years, at least, <laughs> not a little bit longer. And um, I, besides being the um, gallery director, I also run the museum studies program. So we also had a wonderful student, Natalie Martinez. Where's Natalie? Who was helping Helen <laughs> throughout the semester. Did a fabulous job just, just helping her with um, you know the exhibition getting uh, Helen and I designed the show, but Natalie was there to help us organize it and get it all packed and bring it over here. So I wanted to thank her. It's looking back at Helen's family, at her life, uh, her children, her grandchildren, uh, her pregnancies. And um, it was a wonderful exhibit for our students in that it also showed the progression of our, an artist. It showed uh, all different types of drawings, from the contour drawings that you see here of Paula, to uh, pastel drawings, to acrylic paintings, to an installation. So it also showed the students how you can work with a theme and how it evolves and changes. I'm sure the color theory students loved it too because there's so such beautiful and different palettes that you used, you know, uh, uh, around this exhibit and, and different things. So, um, so we invited Helen um, to to give a talk today. We had a wonderful um, conversation with her uh, daughter, son, and granddaughter uh, the day, the evening of the reception. But this was a way for Helen to, to, to tell us a little bit about her work here in the gallery. And um, she's somebody who's been very influential in the arts here in San Diego. She's, um, she's part of the feminist image group, and she also has um, helped uh, uh, people deal with, uh, with grief and loss. And, and she's also, uh, you know, uh, uh, been so supportive and such an important part of the, uh, of the arts here in San Diego. So thank you so much for being here today, and welcome. I applaud Alessandra because without her giving me this chance, um, this show wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't be able to um, to have brought this to fruition. So I'm deeply grateful for um, her having been born, grown up. <laughs> gotten to the point she did so she could curate the show because it's taken a long time. Uh, I, I, I know that there's some art students here and I wanted particularly to um, start at this end of the room and I'm going to move around because I um, think today I want to talk to you about form and medium and content and how they're integrated in the work of an artist and how um, over a long period of time the shifts that go on and, and how different media speak to you in different ways and what you need to express and because uh, it, it certainly doesn't stay fixed for most of us but the most powerful thing that brought me into art was life drawing so that's why I'm going to begin here so there was something in what life drawing is, directness, immediacy, connection to people that is part of who I am. Um, painting came later and um, there's also a real strong connection to color that's just natural. I actually have no color theory. I have a very close friend who's written whole books on color theory and she's included me for the theories that my work <laughs> include, but I, I, just, I just do it kind of. Um, the earliest works here are just, I'm an art student, I'm pregnant. Um, I'm living in an era that if you're pregnant, you, that's it. <laughs> no more art school, babies, home, it, you know, the whole thing. Somehow I'm still drawing, I'm still in art school, and I'm curious. I'm curious about everything. Bodies fascinate me, every size, shape, age. 
I'm just totally taken with them. So, and of course, the most available model is yourself. Particularly when you're learning how to draw, you know, all over and over, you're looking at your face, your body, whatever. So I'm trying to figure out, oh, you know, oh, this is, what's my body like now? I had seen a few, um, we might have had a few pregnant models before I did that. I don't, you know, sometimes I can't tell before or after, whatever, it all mixes up. But um, I, I just thought that the, the pregnancy shape is such a beautiful shape. Uh, and in the era I was in, we wore like tents. <laughs> like, you, you did not show that shape. I love that today people are like in, I just saw, we just, Kenny and I just saw a singer perform in her seventh month of pregnancy and she was in a spandex thing and it was just wild and she was rocking and all that. That was not something that happened in my era. But in any case, I'm just exploring and again, what I'm using there is the contour line. And um, this book by Nicolaides <laughs> was what was in, uh, I don't like to say fashion, this book has lived forever. This ha is such a powerful way of the natural way to draw the sense of touch, how um, when you work with a contour, you're essentially touching, feeling the line in front of you, the line of the person, so your, all of your senses have to be activated, all of your awareness, it, it's a, your hand and your eye coordination uh, become one, and, it, and the person and you become one, the whole thing, whatever you're looking at, so um, it takes a lot of drawing. There's thousands of drawings uh, for, for the, whatever you're seeing here that are behind the drawing. And when I look back at, at these drawings, this is my, the infant daughter that I lost at 20 months when I was pregnant with my daughter, Nicole. And that's still hard for me to talk about, but, um, and these drawings had been in storage for forever, forever. I think when we started talking about this show, I brought them out and looked at them. And I, even the pregnancy ones, I really was just something like you keep in the drawer. And it was uh, Alessandra and Doris Batar and Amy Galpin looked at them and oh, they were so excited. So I thought, oh, you mean the drawing has, <laughs> like I, I literally, what can I say? There's no, no way to evaluate what you've done. It's just these things were, were done, you know, at, at, I was just observing my baby and drawing. And I knew how to draw because I was an art student and I was drawing every day and pen and ink which I could not do today. And I want you to really see the difference. I love that, um, how I'm drawing today, which is much more careful and slower and picking up on the texture and erasing. I erase if I don't like something. You cannot erase with pen and ink, nor can you with the oil pastel. So you are committed in a very, I was gonna say scary. Well, to me now it's scary, it wasn't then, I was just and that was powerful to draw like that. That's really power when you can accept whatever is just coming out of you like that. And I think for a woman that was a big step. You know, you, that, that helped empower me too. So um, th these are some of the drawings. By the way, there's, there's just a portion of, of how many works there are <laughs> that are here in the gallery because I kept doing them. Um, so, okay, the drawings here and, and part of what we put together, this is a much later piece. This was done actually over time. So here we have direct, you know, I maybe spent, I don't know, 10 minutes, uh, 15, I, you don't have, I, maybe less, maybe five, I don't know, a baby is moving. You don't, you know, I don't even know what the, the time is. It's so quick. And now I'm in a, another phase where things are slower. And I ponder over everything. <laughs> and I, I make a mark and then a year later I say, I wanna put something else on there or I wanna take something off. So I'm sort of letting that come through as a part of, a, of aging creativity. You know, not to hold on to these aesthetics like the fast and spontaneous and the big is the best. or Because we have all these doctrines. And if you've lived long enough as an artist, you've heard, you'll hear all of them. So um, I, 
I originally began this, and, and even again you'll see the contour. That contour line is still marking nearly everything I do throughout the gallery, but this was originally just a, a canvas like that. Um, and, and somehow, oh, this was going on during the, my menopause series, or just um, when I was really going through passages and life and death, and I read about the crone, is very, in other cultures, and maybe still today, is often the midwife and the last person at death, too. So that, that sense of encapsulating a life, the way you see that hands on the baby there, the old hand, so you're being born, it is the crone or the elder who brings you through and also who helps your passage out. And then that sense of, and, and then the mother is bursting forth with the, um, see I'm no longer that mother phase, bursting with milk and the belly, and then that thing of the um, skeleton, and just the, it, it, it's life and death wrapped into one. I haven't, I think that piece, more than any, puts that all together. And then I did different things with wrapping it with the canvas. And um, about a year ago, I was invited to show in, an exhibition that had to do with art on motherhood. Oh, you know, like, taking a long time for those to come around. And um, I looked at the piece and I had to ship it. It was in Chicago. It was for the Women's Caucus for the Arts. You know, these again are not, you're not going into galleries and seeing these things. These are more specialized in what happens. Um, and suddenly I, it just became the, um, all the forms that that represents for me. <laughs> there, there are many and I'm losing the word. I remember swaddling. My child was born in France and they swaddle the baby. I don't think we do that now, but that wrapping. And the body is wrapped in a shroud when you die. And that's one of the things my daughter does now. She washes, um, in her Jewish ceremony, she washes bodies. Um, that's the daughter that was inside me. To, and, and prepares them in a cloth shroud. So, you know, there are strange, when I talk about content, there are strange things that come through over time that we can't explain what that is or why that is or that are part of us. So, and, and then it also has almost like a, a womb-like shape or a vagina or it, it has many connotations and then it turns out to have historical iconography, symbology, and I'm, you know, not going to get into that. but. I'm just going to move over to here where this is a very conscious piece, almost, I don't want to go conceptual because I'm not a conceptual artist, but I think a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm not just a blind, uh, like, process, <laughs> whatever. But, so, uh, my later works, I'm involved with texturing a lot, um, with older textures, so the, the wood itself uh, is very important to me. So I start with that wood texture. And I, um, my, no one lives near me anymore, all my family. So also all these portraits keep the children with me. Um, I, I had to, you know, it was, I, could, I carried this and got my grandson's hand. And this is my youngest grandson and he's 18 now. He's got a big hand, <laughs> like he's no longer the little kid that's around there. And then my, that's my eldest grandson, who's I think 28, and my, I actually had to work off a photograph because I could, my, my, young, my granddaughter, who's 30, is so busy in the world and in her work that I, I couldn't, she wasn't around to get, so I, I worked from, um, as I say, I don't normally work from a photograph, but if I have to, I do, <laughs> you know, at this point I could pull it in. Um, so I, I had this sense of I wanted to do an update, and I looked at them and saw, oh my gosh, there's white hair now, uh, and wrinkles. This is, my babies here are, are already that far along, and I'm still here chronicling them <laughs> somehow. And um, the, the other thing, so we're all unified by this texture, and there's these hands, represent, this is the hand of my son-in-law. Uh, her, 
her husband. And um, the children have three different fathers and quite a story. But in any case, and Nicole is a huge heart. Nicole's the one that's in, in my, inside of me when I lose Paula. And she just lives in service to the world. And, and so I just, many, many hands touch Nicole's lives. Um, so I wanted to catch that about her. And all everything I put on here, it does have symbolic import. Um, and you know, even here, this is, um, that's my thumbprint that came off the birth, uh, the birth print of the footprints for Paula, which, and Alessandra and I were talking about, maybe we'll do footprints all around the camera. <laughs> We've had many ideas. The footprint started coming up because, again, I had not dealt with this um, till later in my life. I had to just go on when this happened to me. And um, I, I happened to, to go through something and find the, the birth certificate. I think they still make birth certificates, don't they, with a the footprint? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everything is so different now. I don't know. But so then it became, uh, I don't know which one I started on. Sometimes, mine, oh, Nicole. The first one was Nicole. And you can see the, I wanted to unite us. I wanted to bring us all together, my three children. Um, so, I started with her, and I just tentatively put that footprint there, sort of straight up. Um, and, and then I think I went next here to myself. Now, when I do myself, I will actually be, I can be, what's the word, bolder or crazier than if I'm doing a portrait of someone else, because I'm sensitive to how that other person may react or feel. I'll still do, I'll still allow what's coming up in my form of expression, but I'm definitely more sensitive when it's a portrait of someone else. When it's myself, it's totally whatever I'm feeling. There is no uh, outside standard on it of any kind. And it was interesting to me to see where um, that I placed her smack. It's the third eye here. <laughs> She's smack, smack in my, um, that footprint is right here. And then when I did this with my husband's hand, Kenny, I, another point, I put it here, it's like my, a pulse point. And it's also, um, the hands are so important to me too. So those things, even though I say I was thinking about it more, I still work in a way where what arises, arises. And I go with it or don't go with it, or put it in or erase it. Or, but if, if it's kind of like trying to hear what's speaking to you, um, so that, that you can express it. So, okay, uh, and then my son here in the doing, you, you can see his work too. His drawing of his, um, he, he works in a very different way. I'm a freehand drawer, and he works almost with a compass in a very fixed um, way to delineate. So it's a totally different drawing system, and we, we laugh about that. Because I said, Paul, just hold the pencil in your hand. He said, Mom, I don't hold the pencil in my hand like that. I have to do whatever he did there like that. You know, it has to be like that. So then I had to, I had to figure that out, what to do. It wasn't what I thought was going to happen. And I realized uh, part of what I'm saying here is, and that's his work too, um, my son carries on being the artist in the family. Um, and all the rings of the tree, these are all collage pieces that I Xeroxed into different shapes. Um, the whorl of the tree means a lot to me, the way we, the accretion of age is shown. Um, so wood, texture, branches of the tree playing around, and, and these things here, last minute, this was <laughs> right. <laughs> Somehow I said, oh, well, somebody came and said, oh, you should make it interactive. We were going to do something with that, but didn't have time. But the ledge came up, the idea that it was almost like an altarpiece, what I had created. And oh, and Mariella, you did such a beautiful altarpiece. You know, that idea that um, we could do contemporary altarpieces, too, you know. Um, so I put my drawing tools are here. And um, always oh, some detritus, the stems, the branches. And this little piece here is a chip from my son's ceramic. And then again, 
the footprints. Paula walks with us. And I've really tried to make that a beautiful thing, that she walks with us, not, not um, tragic or sad. I, it's just, it, it's an acceptance, and, and she's there, and bless her, and, uh, but she's, she's with us, whether they knew her or not, she's with us. So, um, okay, uh, well then we flip into this other kind of drawing that I was talking about. Oh, uh, this is Shira, these are in the 2000s, or 1997, so I did this around the time I was doing a whole series on, um, what did I call it? The beauty of old. I was doing uh, elder women and men, but more women. I was trying to find mentors for my aging because I really, my mother had died long ago. I had no one near me, no relatives that I could look at for uh, what aging was about. And I didn't like the models the culture was projecting. <laughs> so, um, but while I was doing that, I, she came to visit, so I drew her. So but I'm saying the style I started using had to do more with pen pencil drawing. Uh, but the way I use pencil often looks like uh, oil pastel or something. People don't even know what medium it is. It's colored pencil. But I began with um, graphite or Conti crayon. What I like about that is you can turn it on its side and it, it responds to your hand in a, just the right way. A pencil's a little different. Uh, but sometimes I like that hard of the pencil, too. You know, I want to be very exact. Uh, so I mixed that up. And then I got into this idea here of what the texture became so important to me. You can see I'm in very flat color most of the time. But as I got older, the layering or the texturing, just I was just drawn to that. Um, and it makes sense. That's what you're, there's so many layers in you. By the time you're old, it's like, and, and so much art and creating of art, it all starts swimming around. In fact, you have to be careful it all doesn't break up, you know, that you get any form at all. You can break the whole field up. So um, I decided to paint the backgrounds, and I, I, I could talk forever about her, this portrait. I'm not going to, but um, she is like an avatar for me of the, um, her... And I wanted these colors to, to express the dynamism that she projects. So that's why I chose them. And then they, they had to be like, you, you can see they're shooting, the brush strokes are shooting up. I'm trying to give her, <clears throat> there's another worldly quality that's, that's there. But yet, um, you know, and then her pose, she, she was just becoming Orthodox Jewish, and we're not religious at all. And, um, the type of orthodoxy she was becoming was very fundamentalist and disturbing to us, to say the least. But nevertheless, when people in your family that you love, and in our family there's been so much diversity um, in the paths people choose, you make that effort to understand what that's about. Um, and I think as artists that's what we're about, being open to what we see, to what's happening. So um, trying to express that, and she, you know, it's interesting that she sort of picked up that Jewish star. I, you know, if you come up close, you'll see it. And, and, and the whole way her hand twists that, the gesture, that's another thing terribly important to me. When people sit in front of you, I know with a camera it's terribly important too, but all of a sudden, you know, somebody sits for hours, there'll be some gesture that's there that is, really who they are and sometimes they're right there in, in the minute with, if you're getting it with a photograph but it's it's a different experience when you're life drawing because a lot of time is passing it, when you're doing portraits like this people are you know sort of confined it's not a, a momentary thing and you're also I just want to say me about that to do a portrait like that means she has to open to me it isn't just me um, opening to her. So th that's a very powerful exchange. Um, is that clear with what I mean by that too? It's yeah, it's like, um, and I think one of, that means a lot to me as a woman to say that because it's an empathic trait and there's so much figurative painting that is not, people are not, it's just using the woman as a model uh, or as a, um, a set of lines or planes or curves or 
you know, it's a very different, it's, that's all fine too, but it's very, very different. And it's very different when it's your granddaughter or your daughter or yourself than as if somebody else is looking at you. So I try to um, honor that, or I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. Um, not necessarily as I'm doing it, but I, I know that that's in the work. This is her earlier, and we've got some back there where she's actually painting on the canvas. But um, I love that she's putting her little black nail polish on. And, but I, you know, there's, there's been, her life is difficult, and I, it, that's a hard thing to feel as a grandmother, too. Um, okay, babies, babies. Somebody said to me, the Seth who was interviewing me said, or, or no, maybe it was Jim Shoot. He said, um, what made you go inside? I, you know? Uh, well, you know, these are pretty exceptional circumstances. Um, I was actually living in a very isolated situation in Paris in a tiny apartment. I had um, the kitchen tables where I did this. And my first husband was a scholar of fairy tales and um, French literature. And he was at the bibliotheque every day. That was how he was dealing with stuff. He was microfiching and doing all those things that don't even exist anymore. But <laughs> and I was home alone in my ninth month of pregnancy. And I just, the tool I had was my art. And I got these papers, and I just started drawing. At a mirror, I started drawing. I was also studying the Lamaze method for natural childbirths, because childbirth had become totally medicated. You were knocked out. In fact, Paula was born that way, too. Um, and, and the doctor insisted. It's like it was his delivery. It had nothing to do with me. You know? So I was learning about natural childbirth in French, which I had very broken French. <laughs> In any case, um, you know, I didn't have, there was no grief support for me. There was nothing like that. I was just alone in this room, and maybe it was, sometimes that's the best way. I just drew. I had my art. And I was studying this Lamaze method. So they show you, oh, the baby is here. The baby is at this, it looks like this. You know, the diagrams, the medical diagrams. And, and you know that you want that baby to be in the, the head to be down. So, you know, I'm very careful to, <laughs> she's really going here. That's the birth position you want that baby to, to be in. Um, so I, I didn't know the word visualization at the time. That's some of what's happening here. I was not a student of yoga at the time. I didn't understand. Like now I know how to link up inside, outside, and you know, in those things. I, I can feel into the body, and I've always been interested in that. But um, I would just pick up one of these grease, greasy oil pastel again. You can't change anything. Whatever color I picked up, people say, "Why are you green? Why are you blue?" I don't know. That's how color is. <laughs> you know, you just—that was what uh, I felt like at that moment, or what this expression, or that, or. Um, yeah, I don't look like a, you know, the blissed out pregnant whatever, but, and something weird was going, I mean, I was nine months pregnant, you normally have no energy, you can hardly move. And I was doing, these are physically uh, demanding things to do, these drawings, let alone emotionally. So I don't know, that was it, I was just crazed, that, or, or I was, I knew what I needed to do. Helen, for th these drawings, did you sketch them out a lot at all? No. Previously, you just drew no. directly on. They're the all board. direct. Yes. Thank you for asking. That's, that's, that's what people might not be aware of, because the pastel is not something you can erase. So you have to have sketched out before you put yes. down those lines. Where that certitude came from at that point in my life, that is like one is just inner <coughs> driven or, or whatever it is that enables you to do that kind of work. And again, that I knew how to draw. I don't think if I was just starting, I could have gotten there. But, um, well, it's like, who cared? You didn't, who cared? You know, it's just whatever I'm doing is, uh, there's no outside standard at that point. There's, there's nothing uh, that can, that's speaking to you after you're, when you're caught in something like that. So, um, 
And I just share one other crazy story. I mean, I did these and I felt, I did feel they were really powerful. They were, people hadn't seen work like this. And I remember going to some, I finally worked, this was after the baby was born and my husband was watching her and I worked myself up to go to an art dealer in a um, gallery in, in Paris. And it turned out to be a very famous one who was handling color field paintings, I think at the time, like Maurice Lewis or go gorgeous color things. But I, I remember, you know, here I was in this vulnerable state anyway, and I'm taking out the drawings which are on the floor, and I can just feel behind me, like, you know, like, oh, this guy's not interested at all, you know. And, and then he says, ah. Oh. I mean, he didn't, maybe he didn't go that strong, but there was definitely a, uh, these are like Van Gogh's drawings. And while Van Gogh is my personal hero, he still is. <laughs> I mean, what an insult to say I was drawing like Van Gogh. I mean, wow. But at the time, I mean, I just, again, so you, you, you know, you, you pack your stuff back up and don't show it to anybody for a while. Fortunately, when I went back to the States, my professor, Roland Reese, who a number of us have had as a professor here, told me they were fantastic. You know, it gave me a whole show with them, but again, a show in the student, in the student gallery. Yes, everything you're looking at, this entire wall is all, and the one as you enter, is all speaking to this experience of life and death and the birth of Nicole. So she, she's born, and um, I mean, I have a few others, but it's like I am watching her like a hawk. I mean, every mother is anyway, but this is a double intensity. Every breath, and I'm drawing her. I'm just, you know. And again, these drawings would not look like that if I weren't paying that, that kind of intense attention. And I love that about drawing, that drawing, um, drawing really teaches us to see and to be aware. And no matter what medium you're going to work in, it's just so powerful. Um, remains that way for me. You know, just around the time, too, that I, I finished my catalog, and I just want to mention that the stories of the children are in the, That was another decision I made. Instead of doing the fine arts catalog, I mean, we have a few art history writers in there, but I wanted the voices of my children to be present, and I wanted to do this the way a mother would do it. That was, that was again, another fighting statement to do it that way. Um, and I happened to read my, my, my professor that I love above all, that I, my mentor, Roland Reese. I looked at his, I saw a video he did and a, um, a whole book. You know, I think there's one line where it mentions he has some children in the book. Almost nowhere, it, uh, and this man had something like six children. Um, I don't know how to express that or what anybody else thinks. Or maybe there's a male artist here that could tell me. I mean, we were all taught to be professional. Professional, particularly for women, meant you never mentioned a husband. Because in the early days, I was called, like when I had a show, they said, Mrs. Jacques Barchelon is showing it, you know, whatever. Uh, so, you know, you got that message fast. But it's the issue of separation and compartmentalizing. And one of the things... I'm trying to speak to for everyone, male and female, is, is the integration of our lives, that we don't have to, that shutting or blocking off isn't necessarily healthy, even though it's professional. <laughs> Helen, I think one thing I pointed out is that I remember that when I was doing painting, my teacher would tell me you couldn't add any 3D stuff into the painting. <laughs> So, so I was showing oh, this to the students yeah. because my teacher would always say, no, it just has to be paint. And so, um, so did anybody uh, chastise you from? Well, that's interesting what you're saying because um, this piece did not have any added things to it. But I had a very close friend, uh, David Tamayo, who was a gay man and died of AIDS. And he... Um, I didn't have the right system, and I said, David, I want to show this. And he came up with this idea of the belts. And I thought, how fantastic, because this was my son, 
it's just an early age that he's coming out. What does he say? Well, no, I knew since he was about 14 or 15. But um, this kind of, that's another thing that's unusual, a mother looking at her son that's gay and that sexuality and expressing that. And then years later, this is what I love about this, years later, <laughs> David puts those pieces on. And by that time, I'm out of art school. I'm far away from any, uh, galleries don't, do my work, so who cares? You know, it's like if that's a cool idea, I'll go with it. You know, and it, it, it was to me. But I, I love that interaction, and again, that's there in the portraits too, because it's like Paul is wearing that Picasso shirt, which in the catalog he tells you is it's from a music tour that's going on. He's back from San Francisco. I'm copying one of his drawings here. I'm actually painting it. In other places around the room, the, the kids, um, the, my grandchildren are, are drawing on this portrait here. That's Isaac's son, and that's Shira up there doing stuff. Um, and that's again. Um, so you're looking at this child, Shira, is across the way, all grown up, 30 years old. So you're, you're sliding around here yeah, with time. Well, and, uh, Marianella, do you have any comments? Because you work with these themes. You're one of the few other artists I know that works with these. You know how much I admire you, and I feel that we speak the same language. I still work in my kingdom, my kitchen. <laughs> in your kitchen, <laughs> in your kingdom. Oh. And I, I, I also use my family as my model. But in many layers, because I talk about them and I add some of the things with them. Mm -hmm. But I feel the same. Hmm. Um, I don't know. It's talking about your life, your experiences, your love, your maternity, your getting old. It's all the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels very relatable. Thank you. Because your, your work is an interesting hybrid. You're so focused on contour, but at the same time, your treatment of contour is really gestural. Yes. And, yes. and that's a really interesting thing to me. And, you know, and, and even the realization that, for example, you're not sketching out, say, your figure in pencil first no. and then blocking it in. It's gestural. But, yes, um, you're right. but I'm, I'm assuming you still, I, in the case of the pregnant, uh, self pregnant portrait, that you probably essentially I do. sketch the whole body. No, see, I do a little. Uh, so you're real little. You might just work on a limb. I have learned the gestural. Yes, you're you're absolutely right. Sometimes I'm just, or sometimes I'm, I don't even. I may not even be marking it, but I'm. Um, you know, those are the two basics: contour and gesture that we learn when we start to draw, and and those are the guideposts all the time. And and. Um, you're obviously thinking about the negative space too, maybe not in a negative sense, but yeah, I may throw the piece out. You know, I may take it out if if it's I have plenty where I'm in the wrong. <laughs> what is it? Oh, the head's you know, off the hand, off the you know. So that gets thrown away. But yes, if you do this enough, somehow you are beginning to see. It's again to me quantity of drawing too. I mean, over and over drawing to to get that relationship to the page and the person and what you're doing and because once those lines go down they're so committed. Yeah. It's a muscle memory I guess. <laughs> it could be muscle memory, it's like dancing, it's kinetic and I, I'm just, by the way that's my my dear thing now at 70 I, I began um, taking senior modern dance because movement, movement oh, is terribly important to me and frankly I could just dance now instead of draw. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if you caught any of that. 